Behind the band. Behind the band. Behind the band. Yeah. Behind the band. Behind the band. Welcome to another episode of Beyond the Bang. Tonight, we look at the story of four young men from Scranton, Pennsylvania, who had a dream to become the greatest band in rock and roll history. They achieved that goal simply by calling themselves the greatest band ever and not showing up to their first gig at Raw's Tavern. I hired these boys to come play at my place on a Friday. They never showed up. The crowd loved them. I paid them anyway. I'd love to have them not come back again sometime. One of those in attendance at the No Show was Stanley Goldstein, an odd powered record label executive. He liked what he didn't hear. It's <sighs> <sighs> good stuff. It's good stuff. Oh. Anyway, uh, the first time I, I didn't hear them perform, I, I knew they were special. I mean, obviously, I'm in it an important label executive. I have heard and not heard plenty of bands. But the moment I, I didn't hear them, I, I knew these guys were special. I knew they were destined for greatness, you know? So uh, anyway, once I found them, which was kind of hard, <laughs> I signed them immediately. And one week later, we were, uh, we were at the studio making our first album. Yeah, what a band. You want a line? Seriously, you want one? Come on. Yeah, you, no. When these boys didn't show up for the recording session, I just knew it was going to be amazing. They had a lack of sound like, like no one else out there, you know? I mean, we only had one week to get the entire record cut. So I told them, you boys keep not showing up like this, and this album is destined for greatness. Even though their first album, Too Cool to Rock, never appeared on shelves, Fans were just dying not to get their hands on it, and it sold out immediately. I went to the store to buy the CD and uh, I gave the clerk 20 bucks and he didn't give me anything. <laughs> so I guess, I guess I'm going to go home and, and turn off stereo and sit there. Yeah! Soon they hit the road with a cross-country tour scheduled. This is the greatest band ever! I can't wait for them not to show up at their concert. Yeah! With the boys on the fast track to stardom, they were featured on the cover of Rolling Stone and other popular music magazines. But life's not always dandelions and lollipops. Scheduling conflicts soon arose. The band was booked for two no-shows at the same time. What in Boston, what in Cincinnati. The Cincinnati no-show had to be cancelled which did not sit well with fans. What? I camped out a week waiting for them not to show up. And now they're not not showing up? This is ridiculous. They're selling out. More trouble soon followed. The lead guitarist earned his hand and will be unable to not play the guitar. This prompted the lead singer to announce that he was leaving the band to go off and not record on his own. An even bigger tragedy soon struck. I'm Chip Rotterdale, and I'm sorry to interrupt your broadcast with this Channel One News exclusive. The music industry was stunned last night after hearing that the lead singer for the greatest band ever was not shot. I repeat, the lead singer for the greatest band ever was not shot. According to police reports, the singer was not gunned down shortly after not leaving a recording studio where he had not been busy not putting the final touches on a new album that should not be in stores this fall. Witnesses say the singer was not returning to the apartment building where he did not leave when he was not approached by a deranged fan who then did not proceed to pull out a pistol and not fire six shots into him. The absent singer was not wounded in the leg and two bullets did not enter his chest. Hospital authorities tell us that he is not currently listed as in critical condition. And I think I speak for everyone here at Channel One when I say his family is not in our prayers. We now return you to the presidential broadcast.
By this time, fame was taking its toll. In addition to scheduling conflicts, years of non-stop non-touring and no-show after no-show were wearing them down. In addition, they were not ceaselessly experimenting with drugs and alcohol. All this led to the breakup of the greatest band ever. Still, a few years later, they were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. When they didn't show up for the induction ceremony, they proved to the world they still had it.